So I thought I'd take advantage of the warm weather today. It's going to go up to 15. It's about 12 right now. I'm going to take advantage of that weather to go back and clear a trail at the north end of our property. It has several deadfalls across it and tree trunks and branches that have broken off. So I'm going to clear that out while it's still warm and clear. Come along for the ride. Here's the equipment I'll be bringing. I got it in the ATV trailer right now. Helmet and ear protection, gloves. I got my bow saw because I'm going to do some trimming of branches with the bow saw, particularly in one spot. I got the chainsaw because we will be cutting through some fairly large diameter tree trunks. Got a splitting wedge here in case the chainsaw gets wedged into the trees. And then a splitting axe to either break wood itself or to use it to hammer in the wedge. Then I've got chainsaw, gas, and chain oil here for the chainsaw in case I need more. So here's the first order of business just to enable me to clear the trail enough to get the ATV up the trail. There's several chunks of old, old dead beech tree here laying across the trail. This first one here I'm going to have to cut somewhere in here and then the next one is actually attached over that side and it's quite thick. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get through but it also is broken here so hopefully I can cut through there. And then there's this other piece. I might even be able to just manhandle that off the trail as well as the small piece over there. So this first piece I'm going to cut, I just realized, is laying on another log, smaller log here. And the end over there is actually up in the air. So that's a good thing. So when I cut it here, and I'll cut it from this other side, the tendency will be for the weight of the log over there to go down and it'll teeter-totter on this log underneath so there won't be a binding effect is what I'm really trying to say when I cut through here it should open up naturally the cut so hopefully this one and it's also raised under the ground a bit off of the ground here because of the log so this should be fairly easy Now I can just roll that log out of the way. I realize now that this log is actually broken entirely here. So I don't need to cut this end right now. But I'm gonna try and just cut through this section here trouble is it's partly buried in the ground and it's about 14 inches across here so I don't know how easy it's gonna be for me to get through it well it was a bit of a battle because the log is laying down in the dirt but I got through it now I just have to take it off the trail No lightweight, this thing. <clears throat> I'm hoping I can move the other one by hand. Yep, it's all broken.
So I think we can get through here now. We might have to cut one other little piece over there, but I think we can get through here. Yeah, no problem. I've just got this small one to cut here. That won't be an issue. So here's a situation where we have a beach that had a secondary trunk coming out of the base here, going up. And the other day, I think it snapped here at about the 15 foot level. And then it's arching over and sitting in a hemlock right above our trail. Now, often I just leave these alone, but as you can probably see here, it looks like this break is just sitting on the re remaining stump. So potentially a little bit of wind could hit that one day and have it come down right on top of somebody. Now the chances of that are very slim. But I think it'd be a good one to get out of here if I can. So my, my plan is to cut the lower piece of the trunk here and hopefully it'll swing down and away from where I am. And we'll see how that goes. First thing I'm going to do is clear away a lot of the debris down here. Just on the chance that I may have to run to get out of the way of something. And then here is where I'll probably cut through here. It's about 8 inches across. No, I don't know. This is a bit dicey maybe. The plan though would be to cut through here. Now the trouble is, that tree, the way it's sitting, is putting back pressure on this remaining trunk, which could press it my way, probably will press it my way. And then the top part, I think, will swing down and away from me towards the trail here. A bit of it's guesswork, but I think that's what'll happen. So I'm gonna think about that hung up tree a little bit longer, because I don't really like the look of it. And meanwhile, I'm going to come at this broken hemlock with my bow saw. I'm going to trim all these smaller branches off. I can do it quicker and eat probably easier with the chainsaw, but I just want to take my time here and not breathe the fumes and the noise. It won't, and the bow saw cuts through these pretty quickly too. So I'm going to trim these off with the bow saw over the trail width. And then I'll come in with the chainsaw and cut the trunk in half and drag it away. Okay, after about half an hour or so of bow sawing, I've got all the small branches off of the hemlock. And you can see quite the pile I've built here for a brush pile from all the branches. This was actually a very healthy tree, I think. It's just that it had such a dense top that the wind we had last week caught it so heavily that it just snapped it in half. So now the plan is to cut this tree Probably in several places because the overall length of this across the trail would probably be two or three hundred pounds the trunk section So my plan is to cut it on the right side of the trail somewhere in here And I'm hoping it's not gonna bind for those of you who aren't familiar with cutting lying down trees as you cut down especially if they're suspended like this across a, an area if you cut down 
the tree tends to collapse from the top and it can bind the chainsaw and it's a real pain even if you have a wedge it can be a pain sometimes so I try to avoid that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a v-cut in the top and then come up from the bottom I'm hoping it's not going to bind but I think there'll still be a tendency to bind the branches that are underneath here they're bent outwards supporting the weight of this trunk so I've left those to do that to support the trunk and hopefully cause less binding then I'll probably cut a section a few feet over and then maybe another section and another section just because this is a pretty heavy trunk and it's still got branches attached underneath that I'll have to get off to so I won't be able to roll the whole trunk with branches on it but I can probably take sections of it away or roll them or at least move them so I can cut the lower branches off. So there we are, trail's all clear again. Here's the hemlock and a few chunks of the hemlock here and the rest of the brush pile over here. I'm just gonna turn around and head back this way a little bit because there's a basswood laying down that might have some good firewood in it. And if it does, I'll chop a few pieces of that off before I head back. So here's the beach I've been looking at for a while. It'll just depend whether the wood has gone punky already because these have died from beach bark disease. And if they're left too long, the wood goes quite punky and is not really good to burn. So I'll see. I'll have to cut into this a bit and see what it's like. So here's the pile of wood we got. It's all good wood. There's a little bit of punkiness in some of them, but largely good solid still. You see the bark is rotted, but whole trailer load, whole ATV trailer load 